today um, a bipartisan bill aptly called the WGDP Act is going to be dropped by Senator Shaheen um, and Senator Lindsey Graham in the Senate um, in a couple of days. There will be a counterpart bill in the House and it will for the first time in the history of the U.S. government codify women's empowerment as a foreign policy priority at the State Department and create the um, appropriate resources. So for years, since the Bush administration, there has never been there has never been an actual law that talks about the role of women, 50 percent of the world's population, um, arguably the most undertapped resource in the developing world. And there's never been a priority um, with funds or, or with dedicated personnel at, at the United States State yes. Department. So this will change that. So you guys are taking this on the road. You're going to Dubai this weekend. Yes. I mean, why, Kristalina, Dubai? I think of the Middle East and I think actually some of the lowest labor force participation rates for women in the world. Exactly for that reason. It is very important to concentrate on where the barriers for women are still the highest. Uh, and I want to give credit to the Middle East. Uh, they have taken very decisive steps to open up more space for women to participate in the economy. Part of this trip is convening um, ministers from across the regions and, and heads of state to discuss areas where they have moved and areas where We'd love to see them move and want to support them in those efforts. So, so the five laws relate to the ability to travel freely, not just driving, but get a passport, um, mobility, um, without more generally. Having to ask for permission without permission your from your uh, father. <laughs> exactly Which, right. Yes, the given. ability to own, yeah. inherit, or manage property. Most people don't realize that in 75 countries across the world, there's at least one law prohibiting women from owning, managing, or inheriting property, access institutions. How can you start a business yes. if you can't go to a court of law freely, if you can't open, create an LLC, access credit, mm -hmm. and then work in the same industries as men? So 2.7 yes. billion, billion women. women are precluded from working in the same jobs as men. Oftentimes, Jordan just made a reform, yep. which was very significant, because women weren't allowed to work after 5 p.m. You know, the Trump administration, in the, in the latest budget, as we've seen in previous budgets, wants to cut foreign aid. If you have a tough time taking this message on the road of international development while at the same time sending perhaps a mixed signal there on aid. I actually don't think it's a mixed signal. I think we have to be rigorous and responsible, um, define our priorities. We have to measure programs and make sure that we're funding those programs that actually have provable and measurable results. And, and then there are choices, right? And there's a difference, like I said, between aid, life-saving intervention, famine um, prevention, and development assistance. Development assistance is supposed to result in it no longer being needed. And that just doesn't happen in a lot of cases. But this aligns with America First, too, because it's, it can't be a one-way street. If there is going to be receipt of large-scale development assistance, there has to be cooperation towards achieving a result. If you can't access institutions, if you can't work in the same industries right. as men, if you can't own property, these are so foundational that let's start there rather than going a mile wide and each inch deep. Let's start to I just reform have, I just want to follow on the, the values question because a lot of people, I mean, the Trump administration does sometimes get criticized for its narrative around women. And there have been examples from the administration, you know, on, on reproductive rights, on having judges that are, are pro-life. Do you find at all that that's a difficult message for you to sell? I don't. To empower women at the same time? I think you look at what happened is happening to women in this country and around the globe. First of all, this is the first time globally that it's ever been a priority. It's part of the president's own national security strategy, this goal of uplifting women. Domestically, women are thriving like never before. The fact that in 2019, of all the new jobs secured, 72% of them went to women. The fact that women's unemployment rates are at the lowest they've been in 75 years. The fact that women for only the second time in history, comprise more of the U.S. workforce than men. The fact that we've backed policies that not only create the growth that enable that type of economic opportunity, but also recognize the complexity of being a woman by supporting high quality childcare for, for parents who are working and can't afford it. Speaking of the, the Trump yeah. economy and, and the U.S. economy in general, have to ask you about coronavirus and what the impact is going to be 
both on the U.S. economy and the global economy at this point? Well, it is still uh, too early to make projections for the impact. We are still at the point of scenarios of the impact. The um, baseline scenario is a V-shaped uh, dramatic decline and uh, very significant recovery. For China. For China and therefore a mild impact on the rest of the world. Uh, but would that happen? This is what happened during the SARS epidemics. At that time, however, the virus was different. China was different. The world was different. Uh, this w virus is uh, clearly more impactful. And the world economy then uh, was in a very strong uh, position. The world economy today is uh, somewhat uh, 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 less strong. With the uh, that doesn't. Of America. I was going to say. <laughs> well, US well, well, economy, that's a good I actually question. was going yeah. to go to that. The U.S. economy is very strong. Uh, we project uh, the U.S. Uh, to grow above potential this year and next year, and therefore uh, we have a situation here domestically uh, that is uh, much more. You think uh, that the U.S. can can keep up the two percent growth level mm -hmm. even with China For, grinding to a halt? For now, we are projecting 2% for 2020. Again, we need to see, ask me in 10 days, because in 10 days we would know what is happening with the uh, value chains uh, with China reopening. Uh, but let me just uh, stress uh, that uh, we have to recognize the ability of China to mobilize more liquidity, which they have already done. They poured Billions, 115 yeah. billion uh, dollars in the economy. Uh, their ability to add stimulus if this is necessary and by doing so helping themselves but also smoothing the impact on the world economy and yet too early to say. How hard do you think it's going to be to maintain this 2% growth of super low unemployment through the election? We're incredibly confident. We think all the fundamentals are there from consumer confidence to new business formation. We just signed into law um, after a year of being stuck in Congress, but we finally, finally got USMCA signed into law, and that will have a tremendous impact on, on GDP. We're estimating at least a half a point um, annually over, but there's still um, over tariffs the course in of place. The, the agreement. And, and the tariffs are also bringing in revenues, and the tariffs are allowing us to have tough conversations with our friends and our partners about reforms that need to be made. Um, Actually, also, we the U.S.-China agreement. Yes, but we were very pleased when yeah. the U.S.-China uh, uh, first phase was yeah. signed. Uh, what we but saw you guys was, were not happy with the tariff approach. We, of course, we would prefer the uh, uh, world economy to have the engines of growth trade in full speed and uh, we really really hope that we will move from what is now trade truce to trade peace and actually women are great in driving <laughs> peace everywhere.